Okay, so we'll be covering the GK Tech Hydro Install and Dual Caliper Kit. We're going to start by removing the cotter pin on the axle, taking the nut off, and then knocking the actual axle out of the car. For the installation of the GK Tech dual caliper bracket, what you're going to need is the GK Tech bracket itself, and I'll show you the proper way to put this on so that you get it the right way and you don't have to do it three times now. There's bolts supplied by GK Tech for your hub for your second caliper and the spacer for your factory brake caliper. All right, now what we're going to do is modify the dust shield to fit the second caliper. What we're going to do is take the GK Tech caliper mount line it up with the hole so you can see approximately where you need to cut. So for this, I'm going to cut just outside of this indention here and this indention here. As you can see now, there's plenty of room for a second caliper to go. Obviously not everyone has air tools. My last piece that I fixed, I just used a grinder. For the dual caliper bracket, you're going to make sure that one, it's aligned so that the beveled edge is pointing towards the diff of the car. If it is installed the opposite way, then it will be too close to the actual caliper when the hub is on there and the brake caliper will not mount. Because you're adding the spacer essentially to the hub itself, you will make sure that you use spacers for your factory brake calipers. That way they're aligned and you don't bend your rotor. Now the easiest way to do this is to take your GK Tech bolts, take two of them and run them through your hub so that you can Use these as guide pins to put on the rest of the parts. You're going to start by taking your GK Tech dual caliper bracket, slide that on, followed by your newly modified dust shield, finishing up with your hub assembly. On the other side, it appeared this had to go on a certain way, so I would just double check to make sure everything lines up before you actually install it. So let's hope for the best. Run your other two bolts through and then torque them to spec or don't, whatever. It's up to you, it's your car. Now to finish with the assembly of the rear hub, we're going to install the e-brake cable cradle, which is a name I just made up. I was trying to think of something funny. I was like, this is like <clears throat> an e-brake cable home cradle. Oh, that's a good one. That's probably what it is called, actually. Now for the absolute best part of the rear caliper install. Installing your brake shoes. If you do this wrong, you're going to really regret it and have to do it about 20 times. And it makes no sense because it's so easy. All right. So what you need to do is make sure that one, this assembly is positioned with the lever facing towards the driver, okay? You don't wanna do the opposite, because that doesn't make sense, because I said so, so do it like this, okay? The next part is 
on this spacer, I don't know what the fuck it's called, on this adjuster, you want to make sure that the free moving piece is facing the rear of the car and just assign the springs the way that they're supposed to go. Just the right position. This one is supposed to go on the bottom so that it can clear this assembly. Don't forget to make sure that your springy stabby bolts are aligned and you pretty well should be okay. What you're going to do is make sure that these tabs are aligned on the proper spot on your dust shield and that the small hole is on the bottom the large hole is on the top. Pay attention to these three tabs. They are going to mount here, here, and here. If they are not perfectly mounted on these spots, then the e-brake shoes will not fit. You will not get your brake rotor back on and that means you won't get your sweet wheels on. When I tried to install the GK Tech Hydro, the lines that they provided were way too short to run through the cabin. Putting it underneath the vehicle and following the e-brake line, it put the T right above the diff flange and there's no very good way to mount that because it's the fuel tank right above that. You can't drill into it. And the only other video that I've seen of someone trying to mount it, it would hit whenever they'd get under acceleration. So. What I recommend doing is going to O'Reilly Auto Parts and just picking up steel brake line. This is a 3 brake line. Um, it comes with the pieces that you need to screw into the T. I recommend getting two feet. This is one foot and not quite long enough. And I do recommend using the tool to bend it, otherwise you're just gonna kink it. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but I recommend using the tool. I'll show you how I ran mine. This allowed it to go through a hole that's already in the trunk, which in my opinion provided optimal fitment for the brake lines and everything. I don't think I'm going to have any clearance issues. 